world's coming to an end. Grab your silver and gold and let's run. Ah, no, wait a minute. <laughs> no. I'm going to talk to you about the best silver to stack to prepare for the worst. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. <laughs> I gotta poke fun at myself a little bit, right? You know, if you watched my last video, you might think, Yankee, you do think the world's gonna come to an end. <laughs> you know, I'm not as doom and gloom as you might think. I also invest in a whole host of other ways, so I'm hopeful. I'm actually hopeful I'm wrong, but I don't think I'm gonna be. I think we're going to see a complete collapse in our economic way of life during my lifetime. I'm 52. Okay, let's say I go 40 more years. Eh, I think I can get into the 90s. <laughs> I think before that, silver and gold are going to be absolutely critical to my and my family's survival. Now, I've heard some people say, you can't eat this stuff, Yankee. Well, yeah, that's why I have some of that. <laughs> no, but it's true. You can't eat silver, right? But I think the uh, usefulness for silver and gold is going to be tremendous. So how? how? How does this work here? Look at it this way. So if I'm in a car crash and I maybe knocked out and I come to, the first thing you think of is not your health insurance. It's Oh my word, is, am I okay? Are the people in the back seat okay? Oh, who did I hit? Are they okay? Oh man, I'm feeling kind of whoa, you know, and, and getting out of the seat, you know, the, getting the seatbelt undone. You're thinking really at the moment issues, right? You know, life and limb type of thing. It, you probably aren't thinking about your insurance in the ambulance that comes and picks you up, or maybe even in the ER or in the hospital room, you're probably, yeah, maybe you're starting to think about your insurance, especially if the hospital staff come and say, we need to talk to you about your insurance. But usually insurance is not what you're thinking about. You're thinking about life and limb. In a collapse, we're gonna be thinking about how are we going to feed ourselves and our loved ones? How are we gonna have potable water to drink, but also shelter? heat if you live in the northern climate, personal protection. These are the types of things that I believe you'll be thinking about in the first few days, weeks, maybe even months. After a few months, I think precious metals are going to be vitally important. So let's talk about the, the process by which I think this is going to happen. The first thing is I think there's going to be a rapid education on what real money is right now there is a general cluelessness over what uh, pre-33 gold is what pre-1965 silver is what bullion silver is that's understandable we're living large right now especially in the united states but all around the world we're just going crazy with debt why would anybody really care about this stuff i i just i just want to binge watch netflix come on <laughs> well I think a recession isn't really going to change that landscape. There'll be some people going, wait a minute, uh, I've heard a lot about gold. I need to get in a, into a gold ETF or buy a silver ETF, or SLV or whatnot. It'll start to be a little more education, but still, from a physical standpoint, I think generally the majority of our country is going to be clueless. But when a collapse occurs, that's when I think the education is really going to happen. When people's lives depend on their knowledge of silver and gold, I think they're going to learn and learn fast. But also remember, there's going to be a general growth in knowledge, right? So as, as, as we go through a crisis, so let's say that silver goes to $100. I think it's going to go much higher, but let's say it goes to $100 an ounce. What's going to happen is that people are going to start really getting interested in silver and gold. They're going to start to, like I said, want to get into an ETF with their 401ks. They're going to probably, you know, start buying some of this stuff. 
and that's just human nature. As prices go up, people the the, the you know the flock starts you know chasing after what's going up. Well, hopefully you and I have already stacked and stacked and stacked while it was not in vogue. But then, once the collapse occurs, I think that education is going to really, really explode. So historically, currencies just don't collapse completely overnight. You know, it takes a little bit of time, right? And what happens is you start to see these exchanges pop up. This means for a time, you may be able to exchange your gold and your silver for, for coins, dollars, that you can use to buy goods and services. Even in a hyperinflative type of environment, you'll probably see these exchanges flourish. You know, currencies just don't lose all their value in one day, right? So it'll take weeks and months to have happen. And I think that you'll see more exchanges pop up where there are experts being able to look at the silver and say, yeah, that bar's legit or it isn't, or, you know, that coin is good, let's weigh it, yeah, or this jewelry, yep, yep, yep. They'll be able to determine the quality and the weight and all that kind of stuff. Um, and you'll see a lot of that during a crisis. But in an extreme hyperinflationary scenario, everyone's going to look to purge themselves of the currency that they have in their country for us, the dollar. They're not going to want the dollar. And that's when the next stage will kick in. I believe there'll be bartering. I think I was studying some of the things that were occurring down in Argentina. Um, when they went through their collapse, what was it, 2001, uh, booths would show up. Barter, barter's tough. Barter goes way back, tens of thousands of years. People were bartering. But there's that challenge of knowing what I'm going to need, when I'm going to need it, and what other people need in exchange for it. So in order to do that, it, it, it takes a lot of effort and there's a lot of mistakes. You may, you may barter for something that you think you need and it goes bad because you didn't need it. Or you were wrong, uh, somebody else needed something one day and so you got a lot of it and then the next day they don't need it. So barter is a challenge, but I do believe it will be established during a collapse, but it's not sustainable. At least barter of things for things. What is needed is money a means of exchange that people will value and will take because they know that somebody else will value it. Right now, if I hand you a $100 bill, you're gonna grab it because you know that then you can turn around and use that $100 bill somebody else and somebody else is gonna value it. But when that currency is no longer valued, something else needs to take the place. And I contend that it will be silver and gold that are used as a means for exchange once again. Now I get questioned all the time. You really think that uh, silver and gold, I mean stuff that nobody really understands, will be used as money? And I say yes in the most extreme cases. Not right away. Remember the, the, the crash scenario I told you? It's not going to happen right away. But after a period of months, people are going to need something that is recognizable, trusted, and has intrinsic value in it. And silver and gold provide that. Whether it's this silver bullion coin, this uh, American Silver Eagle, this is going to be trusted. Actually, you know what else will be trusted? <laughs> Constitutional silver. I don't know if you can see that. But I've got quarters in here, half dollars, dimes, especially dimes, these rosies. Those are going to be trusted. People are going to learn how to figure out that this is legit. Quite frankly, people don't counterfeit this stuff or this stuff that often, okay? Yeah, they may counterfeit some numismatic coin with a special date because it has a lot of you know, worth to it. But no one is going to counterfeit in any volume a generic or general 1942 Benji. It's just not going to happen. Remember, the process that I talked about, the education that's going to occur when people's lives are on the line and they need to have some way to exchange more than just stuff, but currency, money, actually in this case, a Kennedy half dollar. 
They'll be able to see that it's silver. They'll see the date. They'll see in God we trust. They'll see liberty. They'll see United States of America. At this point, they may hate what the United States of America has become, or at least hate the government that minted this. But at the very least, they'll know that the government minted this back in 1964. They'll know that the government minted this. I've talked about this in the past, but in other countries, a lot of silver has to be hallmarked, especially poured silver, because they need to show that it's genuine. There's a hallmarking process that you have to go through. In a sense, this bullion has been hallmarked. It says liberty on it. In God we trust. It has the United States of America on the reverse. One ounce fine silver, 999. One dollar, it says on it. That's a label. That's a, a stamp of authenticity that shows that this is the real thing. Now, again, when we go through the exchange phase, right, and those that are in the know know how to weigh it, know how to run a, a neodymium magnet across it and show that, okay, all right, it's the right weight, it's the right size, it's not, it's not going to stick like a fake, people are going to learn that. There's going to be more trust built into this type of coinage. We're also hardwired to think in terms of coinage. There's a, a mindset that this is money. We're used to touching it and, and, and seeing it round like this. So this leads into why I stack, what I stack as a prepper stacker, right? Now I've heard this phrase a lot. I'm sure you have too. Silver is silver. Silver, silver, whatever. Stack what you want. Buy what you want. It doesn't matter. If it makes you happy, do it. It's your money, right? Of course it's your money. You don't need to listen to Yankee or stack the Yankee way. You do whatever you want. But in a collapse, I contend that not all silver is silver. Or at least, not all silver is as valuable to own as some silver. There are three main precious metals that I stack as a prepper stacker. The first is constitutional silver. I've shown you it. You all know what it is. Specifically, dimes, quarters, and half dollars. 90% silver. The second is government-issued silver bullion, like the American Silver Eagle. You know, I live up north in New Hampshire, so Canadian silver maple leaves. A maple leaf is clearly understood up here in New England. Everybody knows what this maple uh, looks like, what it means. These are very, very iconic. And then gold. I mean, obviously, a full ounce of gold. But, you know, quarter ounce, very um, easy to uh, exchange to. Very recognizable. I use the uh, Canadian uh, maple leaves for gold, fractional gold, quarter ounce. Those are it. I mean, that's it. <laughs> that's all I stack. Now, is that the cheapest way to stack silver? No, you pay some premium for these American Silver Eagles. Of course, I do try to get them in the cull or circulated variety. I like them a little dark around the edges. It shows that I'm going to get them really cheap. We're talking sometimes less than a buck over spot. So if I can get an American Silver Eagle for 75 cents over spot. I'm willing to pay that premium. I don't care so much about the quality of the coin or the grading of the coin. That's why I touch my bullion. I don't chuck it around, but I'm not overly concerned about the look and quality. I get cull or circulated American Silver Eagles all the time. I want the weight. I want the recognizability. I want, I want the trust factor, but I don't care about the quality. I'm not into slab silver or gold. Quite frankly, <laughs> I can literally see the scenario where someone is bartering for food with a slabbed, graded, gorgeous, American Silver Eagle, and when they're, they do the exchange, the recipient cracks it open, pulls it out, and shoves it in his pocket. It's not going to matter. 
in that scenario, no one is going to care what grade your silver and gold is. All they'll care about is that it is legitimate silver, legitimate gold, and they can trust it. And when they can trust it, they will exchange for it. Bars? My dad and I used to go to uh, the mall where there was a, a, a coin dealer in a mall. I was probably 14. And my dad and I went in and we wanted to get um, silver. And my dad really loved constitutional silver. He loved the dimes. He really did. Um, and he taught me what real money was. He explained to me the 90% silver and, and how it had changed over the years and so forth. And I bought my first roll of silver dimes. It was great. He talked to me about the difference between a mercury and a rosy. And he kind of steered me away from mercuries. He said, you know, if you're going to just get the silver, you might want to get the newer ones because they have less wear. So I was learning about that. I was like, wow, oh, okay, Dad. And, and then he talked about bars with me. He said, Yankee. No, I'm kidding. He didn't say Yankee. <laughs> he said, son, <laughs> I don't want to have a piece of silver and need to be able to exchange it or bar barter with it and have someone on the under other side of that trade doubt my silver for any reason. He said, son, I don't want them to not recognize it. I don't want them to have to cut it in half. I certainly don't want to have a large chunk of it that could be counterfeited. Ah, man, I see it says one Troy ounce, nine, 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 nine. I get that, but I, I, you want what for this? You want how much food? Um, maybe if I cut it in half, well, it does have a serial number on it. I, I don't know. Would people doubt a, a, a bar? Well, I think certain bars are at risk of being doubted in a barter situation. This is one of my favorite bars. It's, it comes from someone very precious in our community, namely Silver Dragons. It actually says <laughs> Yankee Yank stacking on it, and it has that iconic... Silver Dragons stamp on the front. I guess it's the front. Yeah, that's got to be the front. <laughs> I love this chunk of silver. And if uh, silver prices go up, which I'm sure they will, this will go up in value. But if I was receiving this on the... If I was the receiver of this in a complete collapse, a reset, a... A barter scenario I would doubt it if I didn't know <laughs> that wonderful stamp if I didn't know you know, uh, you know who made this because I trust the silver dragons right I I uh, I would uh, I would say no I would want to see government minted silver bullion constitutional silver and gold gold that it also is constitutional right I would want that for my bartering. I wouldn't even want rounds. And all rounds are is a, a, a round bar. That's what a round is. Um, I have, shoot, where are they? Uh, do I, yeah, yeah. I have this many, stick this in my pocket. Ooh, I love the sound of that. I have this many rounds. That's it. Not a lot. In fact, very little. But that's it. In a barter scenario, I wouldn't even trust these. I mean, it's one of the reasons why I don't stack platinum or palladium. I don't want the masses confused by that. Are you kidding me? If I'm exchanging it for some some rope that I need to use to, to haul up water out of my uh, 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 well, which, frankly, I already have enough rope for that, but if I needed something like that, I don't want to hand them a piece of palladium and they go, oh, that's nice silver. No, 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 it says palladium. I don't know what palladium is. I, I know silver. Silver, oh, jeez. Those are the three things, right? Gold, especially fractional gold. Government-issued silver bullion. That's the second thing. 
that's also, I'm willing to pay a slight premium on it. Yes, yeah, sometimes I get BU if I'm buying a, a big amount of silver. I, I don't like to, but that's sometimes the only way I can get it. If I can get, boy, I'll clear Tim out. If he has a roll of circulated American Silver Eagles, I'm buying it all. Just sucking it up for as low of a premium as I can get. All right? And then constitutional silver right here in my pocket. Guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I hope your day is a okay.